This is Sarah again, so speech and language therapist and um, working in the Doncaster area. So I've been providing teletherapy to clients for about the past three months um, and I'm working with people with aphasia, with dysarthria, apraxia of speech and dysphagia and this is all in the Doncaster area. Uh, next slide please. So these are the different platforms that are out there that different trusts are using for video consultations. So in Doncaster we're using Accurex but I'm aware that different trusts are using different platforms and these are just kind of the different benefits um, or disadvantages of the different platforms out there. Next slide please. So this is just a picture of me carrying out a session at home kind of in my study so you can kind of see it's pretty much like a face to face session. I've got all my resources there around me. I can clearly see kind of my patient on the screen and she can see me as well. Next slide, please. So I thought I would just quickly kind of talk about some of my top tips, things that I have found really helpful um, and hopefully um, will be helpful to you if you're planning on carrying out some teletherapy. Um, so what we always do is send some guidance on how to actually use the technology to the patient. So the speech and language therapy team at Rotherham have created really fantastic aphasia friendly resources on how to use Accurex for the patient. Um, and this is saved on the Futures NHS website if anybody wants to try to access that. Um, so we either give that to the inpatient if they're being um, discharged home or we send it with their appointment letter. Um, for any outpatients that we would have seen as an um, outpatient. We also have been training patients to use telehealth as an inpatient. So again, we got this idea from the Rotherham speech therapists and that's been working fantastically. So it's just kind of somebody sits with the um, patient in hospital with their phone kind of, and we practice actually having a telehealth session um, with them as an inpatient with the support of an assistant as needed. Then also just to consider your environment. So just to make sure that your room is nice and quiet, that there's no background distractions or noises when you are carrying out your sessions with patients. And um, also just highlighting the importance of caregivers. So I found kind of the support of the caregiver really to be quite essential in the sessions. And um, especially in the first session opening things like the link, that's been often quite tricky. And then just also feedback from physios as well that have been carrying out telehealth. Just report the caregivers are really beneficial in the physio sessions as well, often just holding the camera while they're seeing people move around um, as well. And I'd also suggest just trialing at least two sessions before discounting it. What I've often found is sometimes the first session is really, really difficult and the connection's poor or just not sure what we're doing. And I'm often thinking, oh, that didn't go great. But then the next session, it works so much better just because people are a bit more familiar with it. And um, the other thing that I've been doing is often emailing kind of therapy resources um, for the sessions or for homework or can post these or else we're giving lots of resources to patients on discharge from hospital. So they have lots and then you can just work through them in your sessions. And um, I know some of the physios have also kind of been doing homework like kind of lockdown challenges like 50 stands a day and kind of just checking in how people are getting on with that. And um, I found it surprisingly easy to develop a rapport. That was one of my big concerns was developing a rapport with people over video. But we've developed kind of the therapeutic rapport really quite well um, and people are really reporting that they're enjoying the sessions as well. I'd also suggest just to have all the resources to hand, everything that you need, just have it nearby like you would in a face to face session, having everything and it just makes the session flow that little bit easier. And then the other thing is also to prepare your patients to tell them what they're going to need for the session as well. So when you're arranging it, just tell them, oh, well, if you're doing a swallowing assessment, you might need um, specific things to assess them swallowing. And um, I know the physios are sometimes saying they need to wear shorts for the session just so that they can see the um, movement that little bit easier. So it's just to prepare your patient. I've also found it's a bit more relaxed if the patient puts their phone on a table so that they're not having to hold it or it's not moving around a little bit. Or if possible, you can email the link um, often for the video call to a computer and then they can open the link and then the screen is that little bit bigger for them as well. Next slide, please. So this is just me carrying out a therapy session with a patient. So you can see kind of kind of me in my study just holding up some pictures and it's really clear on the screen for the patient to see so they can really clearly see what we are doing. 
Next slide, please. And again, these are kind of just different ideas of what I've been doing in my therapy session. Um, initially, when I started this, I thought, oh, well, I probably will struggle with reading therapy, with writing therapy, but actually I've been able to do everything that I've needed to with patients, no problem, over video. Um, and I know my colleagues are also doing voice therapy over video calls and some physiotherapy colleagues are also doing um, physiotherapy over video calls as well. So I'd really encourage you just everyone just to give it a go. I thought there were going to be more barriers, but there was actually kind of a lot more things that I could do over video than I initially thought. So next slide, please. So then I just thought I'd just go through some of the benefits and challenges that I've noticed with telehealth. So some of the benefits, obviously it allows us to work from home and um, so that remote working, which then leads itself to social distancing and shielding, which is so important for our vulnerable patients, but also for staff as well. Um, and then this in turn reduces the need for travel, um, which kind of it saves patient travel, clinician um, travel time, expense, stress. You don't need to find any parking spaces. Um, and then again, this leads to the environment. So we're having kind of less pollution as a result. Um, another big thing is the patient can see our face, which is so important to develop that kind of therapeutic relationship. They're not just seeing a mask anymore. They can actually see your face. I'm also finding that my therapy sessions are shorter. Um, and as a result, I'm actually being able to fit in more patients. So patients are actually getting two shorter sessions a week rather than one session, which is really beneficial for, for some of the patients. Um, they're also getting quicker input once they're discharged from hospital. So on our stroke pathway now, um, patients are all seeing within a week of discharge, which is fantastic. And also we're now able to provide an ESD service, which we weren't able to provide in speech therapy before. So again, a really good benefit um, of this telehealth and then other some other feedback from physios they're just saying that it's really helpful when you're doing a telehealth session in somebody's home to be able, able to actually see their environment you can see where they need to walk kind of the different steps that they need to do so that's another benefit there so then some of the challenges that I've noticed so sometimes the technology is a little bit challenging so the patients, they do need to have kind of a smartphone with connection to the internet or a computer with connection to the internet to be able to do a video call. Um, also sometimes poor connection, sometimes the screen and the sound is a little bit intermittent. Um, unable to do a physical exam, unfortunately. Um, so, but kind of from feedback from physios as well, so not able to do hands-on sessions. But they're saying kind of they're analysing the movements, kind of giving verbal cues of what needs to be done. Another challenge is sometimes doing video calls in nursing homes has been a little bit difficult because you do need the staff available to support the patient during the session. So sometimes that takes a bit more time. Um, it can also be quite tiring going from session to session to session um, on video calls. So just to be aware, take time between your sessions. It's obviously, unfortunately, not suitable for all patients. Um, so for patients with hearing difficulties or if um, they lack insight into their difficulties as well, unfortunately, it's not as suitable for people like that. And I've also kind of noticed people with quite severe communication difficulties. It has been a little bit more challenging carrying out therapy, but with the support of a caregiver, I've been able to carry out the therapy that I would have done face to face. But you do really need that support of a caregiver there as well. Um, next slide, please. So then they were kind of my perceived challenges and um, benefits of teletherapy, but I really wanted to get the impression from the patient as well. So we did receive some feedback from the patient just to see what they thought about it as well. And we've gotten really, really positive feedback um, from all of our patients. So things like they're saying, oh, they really enjoyed that. I don't think a face to face session would be any different. Um, would prefer therapy now than to wait for a face-to-face -face session. Um, and this last kind of bit of feedback quite shocked me because I had a really challenging session, whereas the video wasn't working at all, ended up doing therapy for aphasia over the telephone instead. And I did not think it was a successful session as I thought it was a little bit challenging. But the feedback at the end, he was saying, oh, I really enjoyed that. Looking forward to next week. So again, really positive feedback from that. We are then also, we've just been asking some of our patients as well, just to rate on a scale of one to five, 
um, how they kind of feel they're getting on. So we're asking how happy were you using the video call today? And 14 out of 16 patients rated it as five out of five, so very happy. And two patients rated it as four out of five, so happy using the video call today. And then also we asked how satisfied were you with your session today? So all 16 patients rated as five out of five, that they were very satisfied with the session. Next slide, please. So then just finally, just considering telehealth and the future. Um, so we are aware that there are changes to the demographics of our population. So this means that the incidence of stroke is projected to increase. So we really need to consider the benefits of telehealth and it does increase our capacity. So it's not successful with all patients, but it really does work for the majority that I have found. It really does increase our capacity as well. And then just thinking about the future, we can still use it jointly. So some face to face sessions, some telehealth sessions, and that will work quite well for things like remote patients, people with very long term rehab goals as well. And then finally, just thinking about it with student placements as well. Um, so I'll be planning on doing a student placement using telehealth in the next few weeks where students can dial in and observe kind of my telehealth sessions, hopefully then carry out some of their own as well. So it's just kind of thinking about telehealth and what we can use it for in the future.